biomedical data. Or this or this can stand or signal from the body that could be taken in the process for inflation. So uh this is several signals okay from signals to body. What else? I will Uh, which of them do you know? Electroencephalogram, myoglobin, arsenal, yes. Do you see the board? I can't yes. see the board. No. Do, do you see what, what I'm writing here? No, please. I can't see anything you're writing. Ah, uh, uh, no. Uh -huh, it's bad quality. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I will try to explain uh, orally. So we have some signals obtained from human body. EEG, uh, EMG, ECG, um, holographic signals uh, from the eye movements. Yes, it's also like migratory uh, nature. Uh, from us, uh, accelerometers, yes, it's um, activity of the patient. We have pulse oximetry uh, when we try to analyze heart rate. We may use optical devices in order to register uh, pulse in um, our blood and something like this. Okay, signals. What is signal? Signal is uh, uh, some periodic counts. Yes, we, the, we the may divide signals to uh, analog signal and digital. In our field, we are working with digital, dig, digitized signals, and of course, we will talk about uh, about them using uh, counts. So our signal is not um, analog signal. In physical boards, of course, we have um, stable uh, some uh, value of I don't know temperature, for example. Temperature exists uh, in each moment. But when we use a measurement tool, measurement device, uh, we need to fix some uh, moments in time. Yes, and we have. Uh, some index of this point one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So it's number of our and volume. Uh, we have discrete uh, counts, uh, samples, yes, uh, and we have some sample frequency. Uh, we may have uh, the same distance between. Our count will be period of sampling, uh, and it may also vary if we want to detect uh, not a signal but several events. For example, we want to we may uh, we may measure continuously level of temperature, but uh, using analog devices, uh, but fix only maximum or minimum values. For example, using analog. Uh, 
about me, I'm working in a company in part. Uh, it's uh, developed uh, halter monitors. Halter monitor is a small device to register uh, heart rate activity, uh, movements, and uh, blood pressure, and uh, respiratory signals, for example, for example, um, airway pressure, and uh, movements of the chest using uh, real with sonography. It's the uh, impedance of your chest varies during the breaths and you may also register. It. So it's a Russian company, we're working in St. Petersburg and uh, we provide a lot of uh, devices to our doctors and if you need, uh, if you find a cardiological um, center uh, with uh, I think 80% of 80% um, uh, that it will be our device that we are using. We are the most popular uh, company uh, in this area. So um, it's in real life, uh, when we try to uh, sample the signal, we have a rotation of the frequency, and actually uh, register signals uh, as variations. I'm record this video, so I will send it to you if you want. I will try to load something to YouTube, maybe. Um, if this connection is bad. Maybe it helps. I hope. Okay. Um, signals. So we have counts, actually. Counts and some characteristics as frequency of sampling, um, units, um, and something like that. Uh, what else? Yes, so it's uh, some results of a uh, single measurement. Yes, uh, it's parameters uh, of any um, state or any human state. So it's results of measurements in one moment of time. So it's not constant monitoring. You not register something during the time. You just measure and add to the table. Yes. So um, signal measurements. Oh, I don't remember. So I yes, we made here. Uh, 
don't tell everybody. <laughs> Uh, so, single vertebrae, it can be blood level or sugar level, yes. In the, uh, I don't know, pulse, uh, pulse uh, blood pressure, yes. Uh, no pulse of heart rate. Um, something like this. Uh, and in this case, we are working with um, some object, some patient, yes, and we have several parameters of these patients, and we construct using single measurements uh, feature space. So it's like a description of our object in multidimensional feature space. Uh, we may uh, visualize its And we have sugar level, blood pressure, and weight, for example. Yes, we have one person, and we may draw uh, some dots here with the some sugar level, weight, weight, I don't know, eighty, and blood pressure. where one dot, one object, yes? And we have description of objects in multi-dimensional feature space. And this data set may be obtained from clinical practice, laboratory results, and something like this. Um, also, one more question. Uh, what do you think? Could we transfer from signals to single measurements or not? But we make some conversations. Yes, we make. Uh, we need to already have signal. Uh, it's a, signal is not very interesting for doctor. Yes, because uh, doctor looks to events. For example, uh, we are talking about ECG signal, uh, cardiological activity. Uh, doctor wants to uh, analyze uh, how fast heart uh, heart beating. Yes, uh, is QRS complex uh, normal or abnormal and so on. So we need to detect these complexes. We are talking about ECG signal. This, yes. Uh, we need to detect some reference points, it's uh, the, the more popular, it's RP. We may measure distance between them, yes. Uh, in this case, what will be our object? What do you think? No, no, object. Uh, what, uh, what, because uh, before this example, we had uh, object patient. Yes, we have one patient with blood pressure, sugar level, and something like. What will be here our object? One heart beat. It will be QRS complex. It will be our object number one, number two, number three. We may measure parameters of this object. For example. Uh, distance between this complex and previous one. Yes, it will be RR1 of ice complex. We may measure um, amplitude of the peak. We may 
same measure uh, this uh, time of the Yes, yes. So set of parameters for a complex. Uh, uh, the ST deprivation of this segment because it reflects um, uh, state of the heart after stroke, for example. Uh, it's really important to analyze parameters, but not only signal. Uh, in real life, um, doctors, uh, no. In the past, uh, where computers uh, were not so popular, doctors used analog ECG recorder. And uh, he has a paper with the uh, squares and takes, uh, I don't know how it's called, really sorry, measurement tool <laughs> to measure distance between points in millimeters transfer it to seconds because uh, we need to use specific scale in cardiological applications. Uh, and um, in his brain, he converts signal into events and describes these events in principle of uh, parameters, of its parameters. So uh, we are going to analyze of these uh, features. What could we do uh, when we optimize the process of uh, decision making? Yes, uh, we want to help our doctors to diagnose specific disease. Yes, uh, and we want to do it faster, better, and something like this. Yes, uh, in our, uh, you know that there is some tendency that. Uh, signals goes lo uh, re rapidly longer and longer, so we have not one hour of signal, we have two uh, days, three days, week, month, because when we are trying to diagnose some uh, no stable connection, do you hear me, Dimitris? Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, usually, yeah. Most of the time, yeah, but uh, there are some points that I can't really hear you. Also, I can't see anything on the board. Uh, on the board, there is nothing special. I will try to show you it one more time, but... Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> we have uh, problems. We, uh, we have no Wi-Fi here, so we use uh, wires for internet connection. And it's a short wire for internet. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I understand. Don't worry. I'm sure we will figure it out. I, I somehow. will try to to prepare uh, something uh, for the next class. Uh, uh, you, you know what? I, I think because the the um, the resolution is not very good. Uh, I think it would help if at, at the important parts you took some photos and then you could send it to us via email. Yes, your classmates uh, send it now to you, and I think it will be okay. And also, I will try to find uh, some uh, device for my phone and maybe prepare translations from the phone because uh, he has it has better quality. But I need yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you for this. I will try. Uh, if you use this type of uh, our classes, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Correct complexes. Uh -huh. We go from to analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have long signals, it's impossible to look to the signals just because it takes a lot of time. And time of the doctor costs um, some money, expensive time, and we want to do a lot of things uh, without his attention, just automatically show the results and ask, is it okay? Our calculations um good or not or you may change something uh, so there are a lot of systems for signal processing where we optimize some doctor's process for example you may automatically detect uh, points yes and calculate distances between them amplitude transfer it to time and to um, diagnostic, diagnostic features, diagnostic meaningful features, yes, and show it to the doctor. After that, uh, we may do some compli more complicated uh, 
uh, step, we may try to analyze shape of this complex. This is um, uh, and divide it into some classes. Uh, there are a lot of, um, not, not a lot, there are several um, classes of porous complexes. For example, we may have um, abnormal beating. It starts or earlier, then it should go down. And we have some pause here. And it will be uh, extra historic complex, it's abnormal. It should be, it can be um, a different shape actually. Uh, and we may count the number of these extra historic complexes and show it to the doctor. In nowadays, it's really, really popular to show groups of complexes to the doctor and ask him, uh, are you sure it's okay or not? Because we could not prepare some diagnostic conclusion without doctor. It's impossible, but we may help you. But we have to ask. Uh, in this uh, point, I want to focus your attention in uh, some specific doctor's property. <laughs> uh, doctor is a person uh, who studied um, medicine 10 years. He has no time for computer. He has no interest in the computer uh, and he don't uh, want to know what is it, how does it work. He want to see uh, some values in the screen. Uh, and in general, that's all. If he wants to calculate a uh, heart rate, uh, heart, uh, number of heart beatings per minute, uh, we may calculate uh, this value to him. But, for example, our program calculates heart beating per, uh, in a uh, period 30 seconds. Yes, we calculate number of heart beating and calculate Using this uh, one, so it's like a moving window. Yes, moving window with 30 seconds, and for example, step will be 10 seconds. I don't know. Uh, we have our screen and some heart rate and we have some value. Heart rate is equal to some. But our doctor looked to the screen and calculate that he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven complexes here and some time, I don't know, eight seconds. He takes his calculator, calculates heart rate by itself and it, can, it, could be, it may be different with our results. For example, here we have, I don't know, uh, 58, but here we have uh, 61. And uh, he asked, what? <laughs> I see that I have seven complexes on eight seconds, but uh, you have you give me wrong example, uh, wrong results. Yes, uh, it's a real life example. So we need to explain our number, how we calculate our heart rate, and if we display some somewhat in the screen, we need to calculate using this picture. We calculate our what what. Uh, there are a lot of researchers, uh, guys, uh, Dimitrius, we need to um, rejoin the conference because the time of free access is uh, over in 10 minutes. So when this conference ends, you just go one more time to that link that I've sent. Yes, yes, sure, sure. I'm on it in 10 minutes. So when we have developed this uh, algorithms, we need to um, be sure that our algorithms inter interpretable, <laughs> inter interpretable, how to interpretable. So we may uh, explain how we calculate something. Um, there are a lot of um, high or near neural networks and artificial intelligence. 
but unfortunately in our applications uh, neural networks are still mm, not in practice because it's really difficult to explain your first that it's okay uh, that you may um, use it uh, and uh, the results are a problem that if doctor one once see some problem in your algorithm of detection and uh, he's often, uh, he opens uh, your signal with automatic uh, results and uh, you will see that you detect some uh, something wrong plus of complex or points it will be a problem because he, uh, he will not trust to your program anymore and he wants uh, he wants to be sure that everything that he doesn't see that it's okay uh, but that's why uh, during development of uh, problems for doctors uh, you may use simple maybe stupid methods but they will be close to logical uh, decisions of this doctor and he may explain um, errors of this system because you will have errors um, whichever you will have them um, one two errors and if you have long signal you will have uh, in one day there are something about three uh, uh, about thousands of hundred hundreds of thousands Hundred thousands, yes, <laughs> hundred thousand complexes. So if you have accuracy ninety nine nine percent, you will have a lot of errors actually, but maybe tens, well, um, errors on this uh, theory to invite the case. You, you need to explain. You you need to have the opportunity to explain why. Okay. So uh, yes, we have two type of data: it's uh, signals and simple measurements. In our course, we will deal um, with uh, signal measurements and with features, object feature space in general. We, we will not talk about signal processing because it's other task, not here, not in our course. So we will have lectures, practical uh, classes, and lab boards. In our lab works, we have seven labs. Uh, you need to uh, repeat tasks for the lab and do some practical tasks after this uh, example in my lab course. Uh, you will find how to uh, prepare uh, your task in the exercise and specific small review. After that, you need to create a report in the board or something like this explain uh, what did you done, conclusion, and some pictures if you have lots of visualization. After that, you will have defense of this lab work, and I will take your report and ask questions about the code. So please uh, be sure that you understand all lines inside your code. Uh, MATLAB has huge um, uh, community and help uh, explanations. So, if you don't understand, uh, when you prepare for your defense, you may open MATLAB help and uh, just search for several functions and read uh, information about functions that you use in your lab work. I will show how to do it maybe today. So, uh, also we will have practical, in our practical classes, we will uh, do some exercises in MATLAB. Uh, we will talk about how to uh, program linear regression, logical regression. I hope that we will we will try to do it. Uh, more complicated examples. Um, in our lectures, we will talk about uh, theory of biomedical uh, engineering, uh, biomedical analysis, and we will start uh, our next lecture with the uh, classificators uh, in general, linear, nonlinear parametric, non-parametric methods, and uh, how to prepare our data for uh, analysis, how to deal with empty data, what is machine learning, supervised, unsupervised learning, 
And I think that we will start, um, I, I've sent you also lectures materials. Uh, there are mathematical theory actually about uh, linear classifications as minimum distance classifier, bison classifier, uh, linear description analysis, uh, and principal component analysis. This is the method to reduce the dimensional feature space where we have uh, a lot of features, a lot of parameters, 100 parameters. And we need to, yeah, we want to reduce 100 parameters to 10 parameters. But how to do it? Yes, uh, we will learn it a little bit later. And I will open our plan. One moment. Okay, we will talk about uh, also feature engineering because how to create useful features that will be um, the, uh, the, uh, the best for our purpose. Yes, we will talk about it also in the next lectures. Okay, that's, that's good. So uh, today also I want to just to be sure that you are familiar with matrices operation, operations uh, because we will work with the matrices in MATLAB because MATLAB is a matrix laboratory, yes? And our tables is also actually So, matrices. What is matrix? Uh, matrix. Yes, this is a table with rows, columns. Yes. In our ordinary life. And uh, we may select values from this uh, matrix uh, using indices. Yes. I will try to write uh, in one uh, table and send you screenshot uh, photo, okay, Dimitri? Because I think that it will be useful for you. So, okay, thank you. has number one yes we have four we call rows row yes and we have column number three if we want to take elements from this part of the matrix we may take uh, take it using uh, indices of row and column yes so element from the first row 